Well, here we go. The Ann and Ellis podcast. Megan is off doing Megan things, so uh, she is not here today. I have a very special co-host. We just have, we have a we have a couple DJs here. Uh, we thought we would just pack the room full of DJs and and talk music and just and just kind of hang out for this one. Mr. Max Johnson uh, is here today. You know, it's funny, Max. We have brought your name up on this podcast. I think we've been doing this podcast for over a year and we have brought your name up multiple times for multiple different reasons, all good reasons. Well, I that's good you. to know at least. M- most of them are good reasons. Some <laughs> of them are vicious, but you don't need to listen to those. Those are the ones that got cut out. Yeah. Those are the ones that I've edited uh, to protect the integrity of the podcast when it comes to our real thoughts. We know um, <laughs> we're, we're very happy you're here. I speak for Megan, even though she's not here, but uh, this is going to be, a conversation that I want to keep very casual, but I want to really dive into your philosophy and just your belief system when it comes to the wedding industry, how you, because Max is a killer wedding DJ. Uh, World's who, okayest. He's, Let's he's, not set the bar he's too a, He's a killer wedding DJ. Uh, he is somebody that... No, and, and the real reason why we we continue to bring your name up is that you are somebody who, in my opinion, continues to do business the right way. And I want to get into like what I personally feel is like the right way and how you align with that. Um, and how David, who's who's running the board today, um, is is doing the same thing, really trusting the process and 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 focusing on those fundamentals. So I'm just I'm happy you're here, sir. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, it's good to see it in person. And yeah, like. I listen to all the episodes. Well, thank you. You know, I walk the dog or if I'm in the store, I'll put my ear pods in yeah. and I'm, you know, busting out laughing at <laughs> random things that you guys say and going, did they just, did he really say that? Yeah. Like from episode one with the dad jokes at the end, when you first did those, I was like, okay, when's it coming? Yeah. I'm just like, you know, it's, there's it's, the setup. There it is. It's funny. I will get the occasional Instagram direct message being like, are you not doing the dad jokes anymore? And, uh, I just, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta feel it. Right. Like I, it's, it's a lot, you know, I mean, there are a lot of dad jokes. Some of them are absolutely terrible, but it comes down to if I can remember them on the fly, right. you know? Um, but anyways, well, thank you for listening, by the way, I appreciate it. It's always cool when, uh, you have friends that are true, like supporters and will engage with the stuff that, uh, that you're doing. I, I tell you what, I was just having a conversation with, um, our social media manager, Emily, and I feel like our Instagram reach is so unbelievably limited. I've been looking at like the analytics and just the number of views and maybe we suck and nobody wants to hear from (laughs) us or see us. And that's totally fine and understandable by the way. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to start over and create kind of a different username and then just go back and repost a bunch of different stuff and see what that will do. But I've been really frustrated with just the lack of, reach that we seem to have on Instagram. And then Facebook, to me, Facebook is laughable when it comes to putting any sort of video out there. I right. mean, it's like nobody's seeing it. Because I'll, I'll text uh, some friends of mine that follow our page and follow our Instagram account. And I'd be like, hey, have you, I'm not asking you to like, comment and share. That's not why I'm texting <laughs> you. But like, have you seen the stuff we're putting out lately? And like, no, man, we don't even see it. So that's frustrating, right. for sure. Um, which leads to a larger frustration, which is being at the mercy of Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and TikTok, and what they decide to do with their algorithms. Well, and it seems like it's an unwinnable game. Yeah. Like, because I I used to beat myself up over it. Okay, how am I going to get people to follow? And and, and not in an ego way, but if I'm putting this stuff out there, I want people to see it. Yes. And how do I go up? And I've tried, like, I'm like, whatever. You know what? It is what it is. People that want to find me, they'll find me. You know, it really, it comes back to that mentality. And, and when, uh, I was with unique events and Instagram and even like Facebook, it, it, TikTok wasn't a thing. LinkedIn, I think was kind of a thing. YouTube was just kind of, uh, getting its wheels in, in motion. And that was the baseline of our belief, which was if you become undeniable, and again, not an egotistic way, but just right. treating clients really, really well, executing on a really high level, 
having really great consultations, having a great ambiance for the consultations, having a great price that is aligned with the value. Again, I'll say execution again, because it's all about execution right. in this industry. It's, it's about execution in all industries. But we just kind of put our heads down. Like our, our, our mindset was just, let's put our heads down. Let's focus on what we can do better. Uh, let's focus on what we can invest in that's going to elevate the market. And Travis Newell was a was a big um, leader uh, in, in, in that whole kind of sector of, of innovation. Right. Uh, he brought a lot of big ticket items that he specifically took a big gamble on, like lounge furniture and bars and even, you know, dance floors. I mean, right. you couldn't find those items, those tangible items uh, outside of like Chicago and these big market cities, Omaha and Minneapolis. And so we took a big gamble on that. And, and I think back to not only did he take a big gamble on that, he didn't have TikTok and Instagram reels to right. like market, market, market. So it was very much the old school approach that I still am a huge fan of and love, which is networking and getting coffee with the venue owner and linking up with some of the individuals that are, are a part of like the hotel operation that runs right. the banquets and events and sales and catering and stuff. And I think being along for that ride and getting more and more integrated in, in, into what it means to grow a business, that's kind of what I define as fundamental. So social media, and I, and I want to hear your take on this too. Social media hasn't been difficult for me because I have no problem getting in front of a camera and say, hey, what's up? It's Riley. And here's three things you need to know when right. booking a wedding DJ and why this is important and whatever. But what's been hard for me is being at the mercy of the algorithms and, and the influx of like everybody having a voice now, good, right. bad, and in between. Right. And, and trying to set yourself <clears throat> apart from all of those and filter through all of that stuff. Yes. To try to get to the people that you're looking for. Right. But I guess, you know, I think everybody's kind of fallen into that social media trap, if you will, at some point. Oh, hey, look, we can get a lot, reach a lot of people in a really short amount of time. Which, yes. Yes, you can if you get set up right, right. Right. If you can make that impact and you can have that one thing that gets everybody's attention. Great. But how many of those actually happen? Totally. There's not many. So that's almost a secondary thing. Yes, it's a good way to jumpstart, to get people to know that you're out there, but then you have to fall back on something. 100%. Right? And those come down to the relationships. When you go into a venue, especially as in a wedding industry, venues are our first line of defense. Yeah. Right? You know, coming in and being friendly with them and asking them and introducing yourself, who you are, what do you do, how you do things, and how you treat that staff. Yeah. And just like all of that. And especially with your photo and your video team, same thing, the way you treat them, they're going to remember you. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And use those, use those relationships to get you what you're looking for. Because the first two people that are first two vendors that are booked for a wedding, we kind of default to that because that's our world. Venue number one, without a venue, you don't have anything else. Correct. And a lot of times photography is next because they're doing engagement photos. So if you can keep all of those people happy and work with them and work with them in a way that is genuine and not just like you're using them, so to speak. Sure. They're going to remember those things like, oh, yeah, I really, really like the way they did this, or I really like their lighting, or I really like their personality and the way they do things. Like, hey, go check these guys out. Totally. And, you know, you said it, but I, I think go going back to the beginning and, and when we started to see our business take off, and when I left Unique Events and went out on my own and I started to see my my wedding DJ business take off, the baseline of all of that growth has been those relationships. And I and I think if if any vendor, specifically DJs, but I think this is pertinent to any vendor that is listening, in 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 I would say our, our collective kind of humble opinion, you need to be creating value for everybody around you. Right. And, and you may not want to hear that, you know, for those that are thinking of themselves as this uber creative, uh, brilliant mind that has a hundred thousand Instagram followers. And my, my first question with all of these creatives that have followers, how many are you converting? Right. What is you have all of these people following you, but what's your bottom line? Exactly. It's, it's great. It's, it's a great way. Money. Yeah. It's a great way to get your dopamine drip when you put something out and you get a ton of likes and comments. But personally, 
just just me, I would rather have a hundred followers, quote unquote. I even hate like the followers. Right. A hundred other individuals that align with my way of thinking, and twenty five percent are converting. Does right. that make sense? Right. Like, to, there, there's a really good book. I've read parts of it. I think it's called A Thousand True Fans, and they talk about the psychology where we think in order to be quote successful, whatever that means for anybody that's listening or watching, you need a million people to love what you're doing. The opposite is true. No. You need about a thousand true fans that are buying your merch, again, depending on what industry that it's, it's targeted more toward musicians. Right. Um, but to work really hard to appease and provide value for your core group. Right. Um, and so I think what has been lost I keep saying in my opinion because I don't want to create a blanket statement because this is just, you know, my thoughts. The it's your biggest, podcast, it, you can do what you want. True, true. <laughs> the, 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 the number one thing that I have seen that has been a huge shift in the wedding industry in regards to vendors uh, would be vendors not creating mutual value for the people they're working with. They might be going all in for clients. That's great. That'll get you to a certain level. Right. And what I think you do so well, and you could probably write a book on it, and maybe one day you will. And I mean this wholeheartedly, Max, as a friend, as an associate, as, as somebody who really respects and admires what you do. You are an absolute master at creating mutual value and sustaining the value of all those around you. Because I asked Max to be on this podcast, and it was no joke. I, I I sent you a text, took a quick shower, jumped out. And then I saw that you were, I think I looked at your Instagram story or something. And I noticed that you were on a podcast with a venue down near Burlington, the barn at Fairview Acres. Fairview Acres. Yep. Okay, cool. Uh, very well done, by the way. Uh, just the quality of that. I, I love seeing whether it's venues or like anybody else putting stuff out there like that. Right. So props to them and, 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 you know, no doubt that's going to grow and be very successful. To them. But it was really cool to see you on that podcast, number one, but just like witnessing you in your element, you right. know, being able to see you get like fired up about the things that you're talking about. So it was like this weird coincidence because I didn't notice you were on that. And then text, it was like the opposite. I'm like, right. Oh, he was, that was, that was weird. So then I texted you and then I watched most of it yesterday and you were just bringing up so many great points about what a DJ's job should be. Right. Um, where did that start? Because when you think about your growth as, as a DJ, because, again, you're a guy that gets booked out all the time. You're always investing in new cool things, and, and you're very strategic about that. Where do you think your natural ability came from in regards to creating relationships and just getting it like you just get it like right. where, where'd that come from in your opinion um i think it, it's kind of my upbringing and it's very similar to your story you were br brought up in a small town mm -hmm. i grew up in a town what 20 minutes from you in van horn okay yeah so like i'm very familiar with marine yeah, of course ran ran all summer all that kind of stuff so you have that that small small town mentality of you better stand by your word yeah otherwise it's going to come back and bite you and it's going to bite you fast right but, and then part of it, you know, your parents growing up and teaching you how to do things right and wrong and that kind of thing. But I think, and I know you guys talk a lot about Enneagrams on this podcast. Yeah. I'm not a hundred percent sure what I am. <laughs> I've, I've done the test and I always forget what it is, but there's always that, what can I do for you? Right. What is it that we can do to make this easier for everybody? Are, are my lights good? Do we need to up my lights? Do we need to take them down? What works for you guys? And when you get a little bit of success however you want to define that it kind of encourages that right you yeah. like you want to keep doing that and it's like oh okay well people appreciate that they they enjoy that and that's one thing i do hear from the photo and video teams quite a bit is we really appreciate you asking us that because most djs they don't care yeah like you take your time to make sure you go out of your way to hey are we ready you good thumbs up we're good good okay now we go ahead kind of a situation yeah and it allows them to be successful, allows me to be successful. And in the, the long run, the clients are happy. Yeah. They get all of the things that they're looking for and they're done really, really well. And, and you're naturally just a nice guy. You I know, try to. <laughs> you are. And, and I, when I sit down with somebody like David, who incredible DJ, um, relatively new to the wedding industry. I mean, you have weddings under your belt. Um, but you don't have 10 years experience, right? And so 
when I sat down with David, uh, I, I always sit down with some of these newer DJs and I'm a little bit hesitant to even go all in on the training because very much like you, if I'm going to do something, we're going to go all in. Right. And it's a lot of time. It's a lot of energy. It's a lot of effort. I've been burned a lot by training DJs. Either A, they're like, cool, I got all I need. I'm going to compete with you now, which is the natural way of thinking. That's fine. I'm never shocked at that. Right. Um, and, and that's okay. Like, truly, that's okay. Uh, but they're just not willing to go all in. And that's what it takes to be successful, specifically in the wedding industry, because you are going to sacrifice so much time away from your family. Yes. Uh, specifically your kids. My kids are getting older, so they can, like, tell me how much it's like, oh, Dad, you got a DJ this weekend when they were infants. Right. They don't know if you're there or gone. Right. When they're toddlers, kind of same thing. Like, they can't comprehend what you're doing. They don't comprehend that you're missing certain things. Now they do. And, and they can voice it. And they can voice <laughs> it, and they do. And I have to have a lot of conversations about this is what it means to own a business. And I, in, 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 in a, in a weird way, I hope that you can kind of feel one day what I'm feeling in regards to my emotions about missing this, that, and the other, but you kind of have to do what you have to do in order to kind of live out a dream that you've always had. And, and now we have the freedom and flexibility to do some things that other people don't have to do because right. they have to, talk with their boss or their manager. Hey, can I get some time off? And, you know, can I leave work early? Daddy doesn't have to do that. But the, the, the convenience of not having to do that, it all comes out in the wash, right? right? There's just other things. So anyways, I try to explain that to some of these newer DJs. And I've been very lucky as of, as of late where a guy like Davin, who was here, you know, running the boards, like in full disclosure, I don't pay Davin to run the board. Uh, I, I tell him like, this will be a great opportunity to just learn and be more integrated and immersed into some of the things that I'm doing. And maybe if you learn 10% of the things that I've learned, cause 90%, you don't, you don't want to take away <laughs> any well, my business advice and learn the equipment and learn the equipment. And, and he's here doing that. And he was early and he executes. And it's like, those are the things that fire me up because he's trusting the process. He's, he's, uh, utilizing and focusing on the fundamentals and he's not overthinking what his next step should be. He's just kind of following some of the guidance. And uh, not a lot of people do that. Right. Right. And I don't, I can speak for myself, but we didn't have a playbook. I didn't Correct. have a playbook. No. It, no. Like I look back on photos now and I go, oh, God, what were you doing? Yeah. How, how did you get hired again? Yeah. <laughs> After the first one, like, what were you doing? And, I was very fortunate. Like when I started, a buddy of mine, we started it together. So long story short, the background, my my villain story, I guess, if you will. Uh, <laughs> origin story. That's what I'm trying to say. Not villain story. I um, was in a band with some friends of mine that kind of fell by the wayside, had some issues. The lead singer had some problems. And so that kind of, that fell all apart. And then we had another friend who was getting married and said, hey, can you DJ the wedding? I'm like, Sure. <laughs> we've got the equipment. We can we can produce sound and we can produce lighting, but... Yeah, technically, yes, I could. Technically, yeah. But uh, keep the expectations at a reasonable level mm -hmm. because we're just jumping into it. And so at that point, it was very much... I took care of the business side of things and the front-facing side of things. Like, I was the MC. I did all the talking because I'm a lot more eloquent than yeah. he is, still is to this day. And it's not a slam against him. Love him to death. We talk almost daily. We've been friends for 30 years at this point. Wow. Um, but he took care of all the tech side. And so when he backed out um, due to work commitments and family commitments and those kinds of things, it was like, well, we'll give it a year and see what happens. And then I went out on my own. I'm going, I have to do this all on my, by myself. I have to learn how to run the lights. I have to learn to produce the sound and make it good. And so like, it was very much learn it as we go. And it's still kind of that position now is I'm at a point where it's like, okay, cool. I've got my bearings about me. I know how this should go, but there's more. Yeah. What that more is, I don't know. We haven't quite discovered it yet. We're, we're getting there, but it's like, what's the next thing that we can do? And now the next piece of equipment that we have to learn, the next thing that we have to integrate and put together and like all of those kinds of things. Yeah. So, and I, and I've, I've learned, picked up stuff from you over the years and, you know, I've always looked at you not as a competition, you know, we're, we're in the same industry. So yeah. 
we're competition, but sure. it's not a By competitive definition. type of thing, right? Right. And so there's things that I've seen you do and I've worked with you on, and it's like, oh, well, yeah, duh, that's kind of a no-brainer. Why wouldn't you do some of those things? I think it's important to have that relationship where um, I, I hosted this, uh, it was virtual, uh, for kind of a wedding planning group. And uh, one of the first things I said in regards to kind of going into a situation, whether whether it's like a seminar or a mastermind or you know, whatever, where you're walking in and you're learning something like real estate agents for like continuing education classes where you're learning new things about rental codes and blah, blah, blah. It, it, it's to walk into a room and act as if you know nothing, but you want to learn everything. Right. And you have to discipline your mind to do that because your ego wants to get the best of you. Your ego is, is telling you, you already know this, but you already know this. You do it your way. It's fine. Why fix it? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, don't teach an old dog new tricks. Right. So that's, that's trying to get the best of you. But if you can really quiet those voices down and walk in as if you know nothing, you're going to learn so much more. And that's, that's where I'm at in my career too, man. Like 17, 18 years later, I'm learning stuff all of the time. And it's not to say that I'm following a hundred percent of what somebody's telling other people to do, but I'll take 10 or 15% of that and right. continue to polish. And I think that's a lot of fun. And you see that in the world of wedding photography and cinematography, because there's always new things that are coming out that will either a make that person's job easier or will give them more quality. The same can be said for, for the DJ industry. Right. Um, I think a lot about, again, like the catalyst for growth in this industry and who you should be aligning yourself with. And I think it is really good to align yourself with other DJs for the sake of getting some leads and right. you know meeting up for dinner every now and then and just talking shop and hey, what music are you playing? Hey, what do you play for this? When somebody requests a slow song, like what's some of your go-tos, that's great. But really making sure that you take an audit of the people that you're around. You know, yes. show me your friends, I'll show you your future. You right. know, we're having those conversations with our kids, right? You are the sum of, of all parts around you. And um, I, I think, again, we've been very blessed with uh, a core group of guys that really believe in each other, number right. one, uh, and are looking to grow in, in the right direction. Um, we're getting into wedding season. You've kind of been in wedding season for about a month now, roughly. I mean... Does it ever really stop? Yeah. It, it slows down significantly, but I mean, there's always something it seems like going on and yeah. This, just, where does it get really consistent and where does it really kind of jump off? This was the first time in years and years and years that I had over a month off, uh, quote unquote off, right. uh, always working on a million <laughs> other things, but it's a blessing and a curse having some time off as a DJ. Because then your wheels start to turn about... It gets very expensive for me. I don't know about you, but... <laughs> I tried out a few things equipment-wise and didn't work out. So I'm going, you know, I had to go back to the UPS store and pay for shipping and blah, 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 blah. So that there, I, there's a part of me that's extremely frustrated that my vision didn't work out based on just the equipment that I needed. I, I wanted it to be very sleek and this and that and this and that. And it just, it, it didn't work. So I'm kind of back to square one a little bit. Um but you're a guy that also builds, like you built your own DJ kind of podium. I don't know what you would def just. Kind um, of a yeah. So that was my 2020 project. So after yeah. the world shut down, um, I had noticed somebody online. I'm like, I can do that. I, I can't, my, like <laughs> I have zero carpentry skills. Like there is a Me lot too. of things that we had to hide with, whether that be with like Bondo or <laughs> <laughs> super glue or whatever. Uh, so but now that's together, you, like, unless you know what you're looking for, you right. have no idea. Right. But I, I do like to build and have a lot of custom stuff. Um, so like my, my booth, my podium booth, I don't know what you call it. Yeah. It's custom built for my equipment. It's custom built to my height. Yeah. Um, so it's ergonomic. Um, it, it's handy, but now it's like I'm seeing everybody else has these things. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out, okay, what do we do next? What's next? How do What's we do next? this? Because I'm pretty much maxed out at my carpentry skills. Because yeah. I can't cut a straight line to save my life. And when you're doing something that has to be very much aesthetic. Yeah. 
gets to be tough. Well, we're, we're working on a few things that we'll talk about toward the end of the podcast uh, that we're going to start to market here very soon. We're just putting some pieces together as far as video and pictures and website and stuff. But I'm really excited for that chapter. That's going to be fun. Uh, which we'll, which we'll talk about. Um, so with, uh, I'll say, you know, the wedding's, wedding's picking up. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you what I've noticed with clients and I want to hear what you've been noticing with clients and maybe it's similar. Maybe it's completely different. What I have noticed with the clients that I've talked to, um, that are getting married late 24, 2025, 2025 is coming in slowly, but surely, but they're coming in. What I have noticed as far as the vibe of these clients is they do not want a wedding like their parents. They are, are, are focusing less and less on things like, cake cuttings. I mean, they're still doing them, but they're not part of this like intricate checklist where everything has to be these logistical checkpoints. I'm seeing less to do about the things that they're doing and more about the feel, right? which is by the way, to the benefit of us as a DJ, because that's what we're there to do is to curate the experience, regardless of how intricate that experience is. I always laugh when somebody comes up to me or a a client or whoever, even if it's non-wedding stuff. And they're like, our goal for this event is to make it feel really casual and really laid back. Mm -hmm. Okay. That almost takes more direction. Right. In like this subconscious way on, on how you're still getting one, two, 300 people from point A, which is maybe ceremony point B, which is cocktail hour. C is going to be like your dinner and first dances. And oh, by the way, dancing is in a different location. So like, how do you have all of these different chapters of the night feel as if you're just very casually going through this chapter book where it's chapter one and chapter two, and oh, I'm excited to keep turning the pages. Executing that on a high level takes a lot of work and a lot of experience, a lot of confidence. But I will say most, in a nutshell, most clients are just wanting their day to be fun, to be a big party, and let everything else be everything else. And that's what I hear a lot from clients. One of the very first questions I ask them when I get them on a month, I get them on the phone because I, I would say ninety eight percent of them I require them to talk to me because yeah, I don't same. put my website on same. online or my website online, my pricing, pricing on my website. Yeah. Because I don't want it to scare people off. Sure. And again, that's not meant to be like, oh, look at me, right, kind of a thing. Yeah. But uh, there's a lot of people that price shop and they see, oh, yeah, though, that there's nothing in the world that's going to justify sure. that. And so I'm like, talk to me and I can explain to you. I almost feel like I'm justifying what I'm charging for yeah. people. But that one of the very first questions is, talk to me about your wedding day vision. What do you want to see? What do you think about? What do you see when you think about planning the wedding day? Mm-hmm. And they're like oh, well, we're really laid back and we just like this kind of music and we like this. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like, is there anything more to that? Like, (laughs) you know, Um, and and, and it doesn't have to be super refined answer because I'm kind of putting them on the spot. Sure. And you're getting their true feelings at that point, right? They don't have time to, well, is that the right answer? Is that the right, should we say something different? No, it's, that's what they're looking for, right? But I do see a lot of couples now that are bypassing all of the traditional mm-hmm. things, whether that's the dollar dance, which thankfully I'm more than happy to see that go because <laughs> it just takes the wind out of the sails it, for things. Isn't, isn't that crazy that we are now looking at things like a dollar dance is like, oh, you're doing that versus 10, 15 years ago. It was okay. So what, what songs are you thinking for a dollar? Like it was just something you automatically said because everybody was doing it. It's almost like a taboo now. Totally. Honestly, you know, people like, no, no way, no, how we're not doing that, which again, by all means, great. If you want to do it, great. But if you don't, thank you. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Gardner bouquet toss. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing a lot of that go away and some, the bouquet toss is kind of still sticking around just a little bit, but like the garter toss. Yeah. You know, and I, I'll mention it to couples. Hey, here's all the things that you can do. Mm-hmm. Here's all your options. And like, that's weird and creepy. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, when you think about it, you know, and it, to the level that some people take it, it's like, that is really, your grandma's watching this. Yeah, you know? man. And they're doing the garter toss at like 830 and there's still kids there. And yes, grandparents and the dude is going in as if he's magic Mike and right. shirts off. I mean, I, I'm sure both of us have seen some crazy things, but 
there's been some times where it's like, this doesn't fit the moment. Again, it's your day, do whatever you want, but right. like, it didn't have to be like this. You right. didn't have, you know, and didn't some, need an R rating on this video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We didn't, we didn't. I, I, I always ask clients at the final consultation, which is typically the week of the wedding. So, so what I'll typically do is I'll have an initial consultation, mm -hmm. give them some time to obviously think about their decision. They end up booking fantastic, send over the contract, deposit needs, all these things. Uh, or a retainer, uh, shout out to, to Russ Collins, who's always like, call it a retainer, not a deposit. Um, he's putting out some great content, by the way, at Russ Collins on Instagram. Really, really good dude. Um, I'll always say, uh, or, or so any sort of like touch base conversations you need, some clients take me up on that, others don't. Some will like mm -hmm. reach out three, four months, uh, you know, hey, we're thinking about this. What are your thoughts? Thinking about this. What are your thoughts? And then I'll call, email, or Zoom, whatever. Um, and then we'll have a final consultation the week of the wedding. And if I see that the bouquet and garter toss is something they want to do, um, I put in my document, my wedding planner document. I actually, I, I created a video that kind of narrates the document. Like, okay. all right, and on this page, you're going to see this. And here's what that means. If you have questions, please let me know. But I always say, are you doing the garter retrieval? And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, like, is he going up and like getting the garter? Right. Because you don't want to assume that they're doing. We need a chair on the dance floor, and the bride's sitting down. Like, oh no, 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 no! Here, you guys have the garter. You know, <laughs> they've got it boxed up somewhere else. Yeah. So I, I have seen like for those that are doing that, they'll just give the groom the garter versus right. like going in and grabbing it because that's where things can Do get the a little whole thing. dicey. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And so I guess I don't know how you go about doing all of your things. So I get I'll get a um, an inquiry through my website mm -hmm. or just a random email or a random text. Which yeah, the whole text thing that is striking me as weird. Yeah. As somebody who is very much, hey, we do things a certain way. <laughs> yeah. and, and it's part of just, it's our age, yeah. right? Because I'm sure you probably got a printer in your home, right? I, I sure do. Yeah. There's so many couples that I talk to now, they don't even have printers in their homes. And I'm like, how how are you functioning? Yeah. Like, how does that even that? I physically print my itinerary for the day. Yep, me too. And I cross it off. Dave and have, the, he, he's seen all my like OCD, like little things that I do that uh, are very much from 2008 2009 but it's just how my brain works yep and it, it, it's my security blanket yes. i will walk around with that in my jacket pocket and it, it's more or less my bible for yeah. the day like okay i can refer to it and i can answer questions as we go uh, but so i'll get that lead through my website set up a phone call i will send them all of the information that we talk about like i'm sure my initial consults on the phone are probably a little over the top but i that's no just, such thing. That's kind of my thing. Like, I'm a very big believer in here's all the information. Yeah. Here's everything I do. Here's pricing on everything. That way there's no there's no question on it. Yeah. You have no, you shouldn't have any blanks as to where I stand and where the things that I do. Yes. And then in a couple of days, I'll typically follow up with them via email to say, hey, did you guys think of anything? Is there anything that, yep. you know, didn't make sense? Did you talk it over with mom and dad or whoever? Did they have questions? What can we do? And at that point, then, if they want to move forward, we'll get um, a Zoom typically set up. We'll go over a contract. I walk them through the contract. That's very smart. Walk them through um, the, I call it homework, but the planner, basically. So like you're doing the video, I will sit there with them and go, okay, this is what we're looking for here, here, here. Okay, That's great. now here's these. Here's your options. If you want to do this, you can do it this way or this way. So again, just lays everything out for them, and there's no, there's no question on it. And then my final consults are usually about two weeks to a month out from the wedding day. And that just gives us a little bit of wiggle room, you know, in case things want to change. If we have to um, put together a mashup or some kind of special first dance song or father daughter dance song, something like that. Um, and then, you know, day comes and we take that homework that we yeah. put together and that's what we run with. You execute the game plan, right? You I, execute the game plan. When I'm talking to him, I tell him like, okay, it's very similar to when a football player that's, watches game film. I was just going to say that it's the same concept. So when they watch the game film and the day comes, now all we have to do is execute the plays and yes. we know exactly what's going to happen. And, and will there be left turns? Absolutely. There will be, it yep. wouldn't be a wedding without a left turn every now and then, or somebody who randomly st stands, Hey, I want to say a few words. And it's like, those are the moments that you, you just get through. Um, right. We're along for the ride just as much as everybody else. We're along else for the ride. Point. And again, very similar to football or basketball. It's like you can scout the opposing team all day long. You come up with your game plan, how you're going to run certain plays around a certain defense, around a certain player. It's like all the teams that had to scout in uh, Caitlin Clark right. this year, you know, and they, well, she likes to go around the screen. So we want to, you got to reverse screen, all these things. 
she's going to adapt to that. Right. So you might you might stop her for two or three times, but then she's going to learn what the defense is doing or even what the offense is doing when she's on defense. And really good players adapt, yeah. right? Right. Really good DJs adapt. They don't just get, well, I guess they're running this kind of defense now. I don't, I don't know. I guess I'm going to only get five points tonight and hopefully <laughs> right. I can draw some fouls. Like, no, they adapt. That's what that's what people that achieve greatness do is they adapt. And in the wedding industry, it's adapt and overcome. Right. And again, I'm not trying to sound like we're like Navy SEALs by any means. <laughs> but listen, a wedding is a huge deal. I can promise right. you if you mess something up, they're going to talk about your mess up for a very long time. When you do really, really well, unfortunately, they don't. They will scream from the rooftops with other people in the right situation about how great of a job you did. But a lot of times when you do a really good job, you go unnoticed. Right. Which <laughs> no news is good news at that point. You yeah, know, it's kind 100%. of the way that I look at it. A hundred percent. Yeah. And one of the biggest things that we have to adapt and overcome is, I, first off, five minutes late is on time in the wedding world. <laughs> yeah. I tell my couples that, like, don't panic. Like, yes, we have an outline of what we want to do and when we want to do it. If it doesn't happen right at 6 yes. o'clock and it happens at 6.10, so be it. Sunset photos. That was, again, we're... Sunset photos is the, the one that um, I let the couples know, hey, if you were planning to do this, that takes precedence. Yep. You have one sunset a day. I can do whatever I want, whenever I want. Yeah. But once that sunset's gone, it's gone. So if we need to, if I feel like we're going to run into a problem with photography and like, let's say even toast, because I run my day just a little bit differently than mm -hmm. you do, better or worse. Yeah. Six, one, half a dozen, the other, right? But if I feel like we're going to have overlap there, go do your sunset. We'll push everything back. We'll keep everybody entertained. We'll keep them in the know of what's going on. And that's a conversation that, you know, we have, I have with my photo and my video team say, Hey guys, we're getting pretty close. I don't want to get into the middle of it. And dad, who's been drinking since eight o'clock in the morning, all of a sudden gets the mic and is talking about his sailing trip to Aruba and then his African safari. And then yes, like, right. all of the things that have <laughs> nothing to do with anything, <laughs> but it ends up being 45 minutes. Yes. And, and, and this is where you get in where you fit in as a DJ. You know, if, if they're hiring this stellar photo and video team and on the itinerary, it says 15 minutes max for sunset photos, but they, you know, hired an ivory and bliss or graphic formation. I mean, among many others, those are just names that are coming to mind. Let them do their thing, man. Right. Like it's not your place as a DJ to like, Hey guys, we got three more minutes. I'm going off the, I three more minutes. You right. need to get it. Listen, <laughs> The day is going to be done and the guests aren't going to remember that the first dance or whatever was supposed to come next was 10, 15 minutes late. They're going to go and grab another drink that right. most likely is free, right? right? They're going to go catch up with somebody they haven't seen for months or years and catch up on, you know, how so-and-so is doing. And then they come back in. So it's like the minute you get things started back up, it's like a short-term memory loss right. for a lot of people. But our job is to at least do the best job we can to curate that experience, keep the music going, right. you know, with that, ladies and gentlemen, we got five more minutes or so on the sunset photos. You're more than welcome to get on up, grab yourself a drink. I will of course keep you all updated as we're moving along. So if you can say those little things, it protects the creatives that are out there doing their thing. Right. And when the day is done and the couple's going to look back on the video and the photos, it's going to be worth the extra 10 minutes they right. took. I cannot stand when I hear from photographers and cinematographers that they just worked with a DJ that was, you know, on their butt the entire day. Like it's their show. They're the, they're, they're the ones that are in charge as far as the DJ. Like you, you're not, there should be kind of a chain of command, but right. to me, if there's a planner or a coordinator, I'm, I'm consulting with them first. I'm having a little round table meeting with the photographer, cinematographer, uh, any other major kind of players in the game catering when that's coming, mm -hmm. anybody's given a blessing, yep. uh, making sure order of toasts are good to go. So it's like, I'm reaching out in real time to the right people, but I'm also really focusing on like, I've got a couple other individuals above me. Right. That's where you have to let your ego go, man. Right. And that's one thing I noticed with Ashton Hill is, and I mean, that staff there is very familiar with how I work. 100%. We, yep. We've worked together many, many times over the years now. And, uh, you know, one of the things I like to tell my couples is when that reception starts, it's my show. And it's not like, look at me. It's, hey, I'm going to start directing traffic. And so when I've got the Ashton Hill staff that I'm working with, they know that. And it frees them up to do some of the back end things. Yes. And it almost becomes a game at that point of, Who's going to get to the head table to get drinks first? Yeah, right. You know, that right. kind of thing. And so a lot of times, you know, I'm out doing whatever and your staff, 
or the Ashton Hill staff are there and I'm like, you guys, you beat me to it. You're making me look bad kind of a thing. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it, it's those little things that we play off of each other. Yes. Right. And as long as you're communicating with all of the people, whether that is the photo and video and the venue and coordinators and whoever, everybody's going to be fine with it. Yeah. It's not a big deal. Yeah. And, and I think back to some of the, 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 the first couple wedding season that I, wedding seasons that I did as a DJ, wedding planners, day of coordinators, they weren't as prevalent as they are today. Right. I'm glad that there are more planners and day of coordinators because at the end of the day, it makes my job as a DJ easier. Like it doesn't make it harder. Right. It, the only time it makes it harder is when a planner or a day of coordinator is on a very unrealistic power trip right. or maybe they should have hung it up years ago right. and now they're just, just angry for whatever reason, or yes. they're just, you know, annoyed at everything around them. It's like, you've got to choose something else. Like you, you, you do uh, anyways, but, but starting off the, as DJs, like we were the ones running everything, right. you know, photographers were looking at us like, Hey, what, what do you have what, for a time? What are we supposed to do right now? Yeah. Like, <laughs> what do you want us to do? Or again, getting drinks for, for the wedding party and parents and, you know, constantly running around, you know, I almost spent more time out running around consulting with people than I was like behind my, my DJ setup other than some of the announcements that I was making. So it's, it's really great to see a shift in, in that whole thing and getting people on board that are, uh, very like-minded. And I think if you can find that integrated into a venue, it just makes your venue that much more, uh, valuable, right. uh, for an overall experience as a client. Right. And it, it's and the thing I've noticed is, as the price points get higher, the less of those problems you run into. Yes. Whether that's photo and video or coordinators, you know, it's when you get the hey, they splurge on one thing, and then everybody else is kind of more of that economics <laughs> budget. Fee, like you, st that's where you start running into problems. Or even for couples, and I'm not bashing anybody, but there is a certain the ones that are paying the premium price for things. They take your word for it. Yes. They assume that you're the professional that, yep, cool. We were in good hands. Part of that's how you carry yourself as, yes. a, as a professional, right? But, you know, I've noticed when I was first getting started that some of those lower budget things, because we all start somewhere, right, was, okay, cool, we can do this. Well, can we do this? Yes. And then that this keeps getting just a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger, which I'm, I'm thankful that we had to run through that because now it's like, okay, we have the foresight now to anticipate those things and we can yes. take care of that on the front end as opposed to being kind of surprised by it yes i i agree I, I don't know if you are anything like me with this and maybe it's just because i've, I've, I've been djing weddings so long that i can maybe spot some of these red flags and, and maybe i'm just being way too hyper aware which would very much be me but i can always pick up on how a client is going to be by their very first inquiry and what they say in that inquiry. Are you uh, available? What's your price? Yeah. I typic <laughs> I typically won't I'll respond, but right. I'll typically say I may not be available. Right. Um it's very to me, it's very rare to have somebody come across very like dry and corporate. And sometimes the inquiries that you get, because I'm very warm in my emails, mm -hmm. you know, like I'll throw a smiley face in there. I'm exclamation points. You know, that's why I tell David all the time, like you need to always be like, you should have genuine excitement, like right. oh, lead. Awesome. This is great. Like, I can't wait to talk to you. But when that lead comes in and it's like, yeah, are, are you available? We're having a wedding. What, what I want to learn more, like instead of, I would love to learn more. It's like, I want to, I want your pricing, yep. you know, just very like dry and rigid. Yep. I automatically start to feel like ah, it's like a game of Tetris where I can see that block coming down and there's nowhere to really put it. Right. Like it's not going to fit with what I've got going on. And I think if you are somebody who's taken on everything and anything, you're going to run into a lot of problems. It's scary to turn an event down. But over the last five years, I've done that. I, I'll do that. I'm not going to name venues, obviously, but there are certain venues I won't take yep. because I've been there many times. I know but by no fault of anybody, but it's just as a DJ, you're almost set up to fail sometimes, whether it's acoustics or just the load-in process. It's on the third floor, but then the ceremony's on the fourth floor, and then the cocktail hour is here. It's like all of these things, the more experience you have, you need to take control of your business so you can set very 
realistic expectations for the client and for yourself. And why would you want to set yourself up to fail? Exactly. Why, why do you want to work with the owner of that venue who isn't going out of their way, isn't even, won't cross the street for you to Correct. do something for you? Yeah. Right? And yeah, they're, I'm, same, same thing. You know, they're, I'll play like the acoustically sound ones. Those don't scare me as much. Do, do they make me super thrilled? No, I look at it as a challenge and there's always that, is it going to go the way I think it's going to go? Right. Right. I'm very confident in what it is I do, but there's always, there's always variables in there, yeah. right? That may or may not work. Well, what clients need to understand is some of these venues that are far from ideal acoustically or they're in multiple locations as DJs, we have to invest more money and more equipment to execute. Therefore, our price is going to have to be adjusted for that. Right. You know, not all venues are created equal. I wish I wish they were. I wish right. every venue had the same load in, load out process. I wish First the floor. acoustics were the same. Yeah, and, and they're not. And there are some venues where I truly, I'm showing, I'm like, how? Like, this is so much harder than what it has to be. Like, there comes a time where you got to, as a venue, invest in your own sound system. And, you know, acoustic panels certainly help. Right. But there are just some things where as a DJ, you are, you're kind of set up to fail. And then to your point, you do, you have some venue owners or some venue managers that are just kind of like sitting back being like, I wonder how he's going to do this. And it's right. like, oh, thanks guys. Appreciate, appreciate it. This is, this is all great. You. And then at that point it's like, I'll show you. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. this is going to work because yeah. I refuse to let it fail. Yeah. I'm going to do everything in my power to not let that fail. With a and, smile on your face yep. and you're, you know, greeting everybody. So inside I might be going, yeah, I'm never coming back here again. <laughs> Why did never. I do this? Biggest thing for me, aside from like the venue and the load and load out and stuff, um, because I'm not the guy that it's like, I'll do it, but it's going to be seven grand to do it. You right. want, like I, I'm, I'm not that guy, right? I'll, I'll pass it to somebody who maybe um, needs some more weddings or, you know, they need the experience to get there. Learn, learn how to overcome those situations. Exactly, because David. it's, it's going to make you very <laughs> thankful for, for um, some of the other situations that you're in. But uh, you, you got to put yourself in that fire for sure. And, and, and also it puts your, um, puts your equipment to the test too. Right. Like, you know, it helps you kind of look at, okay, well, these speakers are just not going to do it. Like I need to probably budget next year for some of these. Or, ah, these lights are great, but it's not giving the coverage that I need. Or I need more control over my lighting. That's something that you do very, 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 very well. I think that aside from your personality, your kindness, doing business the right way, your client onboarding process, that's all like, that's great. From a tangible side of things, I feel like you are a guy that is consistently evaluating your current equipment. And I know this now more than ever because of the discussions that we've had on right. kind of what we're doing. Um, but you're, you're always trying to perfect the craft of what things look like and what things sound like. Right. And, and very much full disclosure, I'm not a technical DJ. Anybody that has come and sh like I have other DJs come shadow me just to see, sure. Hey, how do you do things? Um, which, and I'm happy to do it. I love being able to do that and be, give them a jump start because I never had that. Yeah. I was totally going by feel and like, well, right. that's a curb. We'll probably go back the other way. Oh, there's yeah. the other curb. Okay, let's go back. But I'm not a technical DJ. So I rely on other things to kind of bring that more full circle. And one of them is lighting. Um, I love talking about doing lighting. Um, just the way I've got my system set up and the things that I'm able to do with it. Um, and again, it's not meant to be ego. Look at me. I'm the greatest yes. thing since yes. concert lighting or whatever. Yeah. But I've got photo and video teams that have come up to me and go, okay, we've been all over the country. How are you doing this? Like, are all of your songs synced to your light system? And it's <laughs> Best like, compliment ever. Right. And I'm like, no. <laughs> and none of it is. None of it's synced. It's all what's called busking. So basically, you're doing it on the fly and you're mm -hmm. adjusting to what's going on. Yeah. And being able to build the system, the lighting system that I have... I've become very proficient in it. I know how my equipment works and what the capabilities are. And if you're in this kind of industry, you need to know all of those things. How yes. does it work? How does it go together? What can you do with it? But it allows me to do things in a different way than I think a lot of the DJs and people out there right now. Yeah, I, I agree. There's been a lot of chatter in the DJ world about like, if you're not mixing at weddings, uh, you're irrelevant and you're the corniest DJ in the world. I spent years not mixing at weddings, but you know what that allowed me to do? Not mixing at weddings. And I'm doing it more and more now because it's just, it's fun and technology is where it's at. And it's just, it's a ton of fun. Right. But what I used to do because I wasn't, 
you know, putting my headphones on and looking down and scratching and showing people how cool I am, which some DJs do, some DJs don't. Some DJs can mix very tastefully and still be very approachable. And, you know, others think they got booked for a hundred grand at a Vegas club, <laughs> you know, and you're just lucky to have them there. You're in the middle of a cornfield. Out yeah. In the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, let's all just play our position, but it allowed me to keep my head up and look at what I could do. Right. Meaning grandpa's diet Pepsi is almost out. I can go take care of that. Yep. Uh, the wedding party needs drinks. Uh, I can tell the wedding planner is looking for something. Uh, I can tell the photographer, um, need something and my eyes are always like can i help you with something versus and i'm not talking like during the dance portion i'm talking right. more like even like when the dancing first kind of gets started right you can have a couple songs lined up and you can adjust things as you go but just it allowed me to be more integrated and at that time you know uh i was with you know travis newell and bill tandy and rob abalana i mean we had some killer wedding djs that were out hustling every weekend trying to just level up level up level up level up and we were all in a very friendly way being very competitive of like what did you do at the wedding well i ended up getting drinks here and like got these people taken care of so it was like a game and we would come back to the shop at 1 30 in the morning and we would talk about it, and then we got home at five um <laughs> but but having this standard kind of set when I first started DJing, I rolled with Travis Newell and then Dave Sheets, who doesn't DJ anymore. Dave Sheets and his family own all like the depots, uh, the convenience stores, okay. which I don't know if there's one in Van Horn. There's one in Atkins, I think. I think they bought the one that was in Van Horn. Okay. Yeah. They're like expanding now. like crazy. So Actually, he's building a new one. Are they? Which is totally weird because that, that gas station has been on that corner since the day I moved to Van Horn. Wow. And for now I, I drive through and I'm like, what are they? <laughs> Wait, No. You, you can't do that because yeah. like, I'm losing where I'm at. <laughs> yeah, those guys are killing it. But anyway, so so Travis and David, uh, or Dave, uh, started together, and they were Ultimate Entertainment. There's an Ultimate Entertainment up in Waterloo, so there were you know, some things there, and then they uh, turned into unique events. But I went with Dave and Travis. Uh, when I tell you I shadowed them for at least a year, because I was so nervous. I'm like, there's no way I can go out and do this by myself. So I would just shadow and shadow and shadow and shadow and shadow. And so Travis and Dave would start to kind of show me some things and like that, that had nothing to do with music. Right. Right. Like why you show up early and who you need to have your as your point of contact and why you need to check in with the client at this time and how this works and how that works. So it was just I was a sponge. And I, I think if you have an opportunity, if you're if you're looking at getting into the industry, whether it's a DJ, photography, you know, cinematography, the list goes on and on and on and on again. Put your ego to the side and start to shadow. There are so many incredible professionals in this industry around this area that would love a second shooter, yeah. right? And and it doesn't have to turn into like, well, you turn into competition now. Again, I think that is the natural way of things. But if you can find a way um, to create kind of an agency model, right? right. Like let's, let's put, like, I want you to be successful. You had my training. I feel really good about who you are. Let's maybe create like a, a referral fee or something where we can create a win-win for everybody. I think if you can get really creative with that as you're having people seeking out your talent, um, that can be very, very beneficial. But you have to be willing, again, to commit to go all in on your own, but to commit to the mentoring. Right. You know, Travis taught me a lot about sales, like how, how to be very relatable to the person that you're sitting down with and coming across very low pressure, like no obligation. And, you know, I don't know if he does a ton of selling anymore, but he's a freaking master at that, right. man. And then you, and then you go into logistics, right? And it's like back when we were doing like ghost chairs and Shivari chairs and lounge furniture, and we were in Des Moines and then Dubuque and Davenport and here and here and here, he'd sit down at a freaking whiteboard and like draw out, okay, well, this box truck has this much square footage. This needs to go and go like this. And this needs to be here by one. So we unload that. We can go here. Again, I'm just looking at all the things that he's doing. And it's like, yeah, that's, that's what it takes to be successful. So even though I don't work for that company, I don't see those guys very often. Unfortunately, I, 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 I love what they're doing. I, I love businesses like that because I know where they all came from, right. right? Like the work that it takes to achieve that level of greatness and execution is a very long road. Yep. And I think again, sounding like a boomer here, but social media can put this thinly veiled marketing approach of like i'm this when in reality like you see the highlights you don't have media. the foundation yet right 
So, and anyways. the thing with Travis is he's created this conglomerate, if you will, for the events industry. Like he 100%. has fingers in a lot of that. <laughs> yes. And he's still there. The dude like, is a beast, man. I'm tearing down at midnight and who walks through the door? Yep. It's Travis and his team. It's Travis himself and his team. And he's not just doling out orders. He's up on the lifts and he's cutting lights down and he's winding lights up and packaging things. He's doing all of the things that those ground, I don't know how they have it set up, but their ground level people are yeah. doing. Like he doesn't shy away from it. And you can go up and talk to him and he's just, he's a buddy. Yeah. Right? yeah. You you will not outwork Travis no. Newell. You, you, I'll say amazing. it again. You will not outwork Travis Newell. And he's always so humble. Yeah. Um, and you, you, you look at, uh, how big they are now. Like you said, right. like it was, it was just very smart in regards to how they grew from floral to, to having things all in one place. Right. Right. Uh, is, I mean, it's just, it's so smart to be able to capitalize that on the right way, but you still have to execute. That's right. what I'm saying. Like you still have to execute. And this is an industry that is built on execution. You can have the coolest website, greatest social media account, funniest reels, keeping up with all the trends online and blah, 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 blah. All the toys, all the equipment. But if you're crap in the bed every other wedding, whoosh, yep. it's going to get washed out. Yep. For I sure. That. Um, how many weddings do you typically do a year? Where have you have you decreased the amount of weddings and kind of refined your pricing? Or are you just kind of at that point where let's just see where it takes us? Um, so what was that? 20 was it last year? Two years ago, I did 50 weddings. I was just taking, but we were coming out of COVID. Same. And I was we, right we there, all brother. had to like we all had to kind of recover from that. Mm-hmm. Part of it was thrown in our laps because now we have all of these people that are getting married. You have 5 million people getting married on 2 million available dates. <laughs> yes. Like, you you kind of had to just to absorb it. And I think as an industry, we all kind of work together to get that all taken care of. Um, but it was at that point. So not only do I do weddings, but I work with corporate events. I work with nonprofits yeah. and you know some of these other odds and ends, like one-off things. So I think that year, I think I had 70 events. Whew through the course of the year, something like that. And, and you're, like, you're a one-man operation. Yeah, I don't have a team. It's me. Yeah, yeah. that's it, that's it, important to know. <laughs> you're it's one me man, and me man. alone. Um, we've talked about it. You know, I've talked about hiring people. And but I just, I, uh, because of age, and I mean, you look at me and, well, I mean, we are the same age, right? Yeah. And it's not getting any easier for, for me to do it as a one-man operation. So it's one of those things that I keep kind of toying with, like, if I get any more stuff, um, I'm definitely going to have to have some help yeah. because it, it takes me a while to get in, get out and all those kind of things. Um, but yeah, so I went from 70 total events or whatever it was and I'm like, okay, I, I'm, I'm whooped. Like it takes a toll on it. You. It absolutely Especially does. when you're doing 20 event, 20 weddings, weddings, which are the stress level and mm-hmm. all the things that go along with it within two months. It was just like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> I, we got to pace us back and i've got young kids too at home you know they're nine and almost six now and missing out on some of that stuff it's like okay i'm gonna cut that back so last year i think i ended up with 40 40 weddings and 50 something events yeah that's Um, that's that's really solid that's to me that's like really that's a really um that's a good number for a full-time yeah DJ slash product. You're kind of a mobile production company at More this or less, point. Yeah. It's like I I, I always like I kind of call you a DJ, that. but and you are, but center stage productions, it's I mean, it's in the name. You're it it's a kind of a mobile boutique kind of production company. Yeah. yeah it, it just kind of morphed as that and I've embraced it. It's allowed me to do some of the other things that I wouldn't have had the opportunity to do. Gets me in touch with people that I wouldn't have had yeah. a network connection to otherwise. So which is really kind of nice. And it and now it gets the wheels turning. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, what else can we do? Yeah. What well, other kind of cool toys can I get? And, that and that's kind of where our conversation evolved into where it's at now, which is to, when I say join forces, I don't it's center stage Mullane. That's not what I'm talking about. But like, um, it's not bad. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll roll out the title here when, when the time is right. But I was, I was just, uh, I, I just got done with the consultation. Um, and I'm thinking to myself, gosh, it would be really cool to have the ability to offer up like an ultimate 
like package or, or like all offerings, right? And and what I mean by that is just insane lighting and having like visual, having graphics that are playing while you're DJing and the dance floor is open and uh, curated lighting for like a first dance and um, you know just the list goes on and on, kind of like a festival package, mm-hmm. right? Because again, I, I think. That's where weddings are going. That's a question I'm going to ask both of you, actually, is where weddings are going. So be thinking about that because I'm always fascinated by, like, where where are we going with this? Right. Um, and in my opinion, in regards to where we're going, is the technology is going to get uh, bigger in, in, in regards to the impact that, that a wedding – uh, should have on, on the guests, Mm -hmm. like the guest experience, right? Because when you think about, um, what your guests will remember, okay, they're, they're going to walk into a a room and they're going to see the beauty of a venue. Uh, they're going to remember how they were treated by the bartenders. Um, they're gonna remember if it was an open bar or not, if they had to pay for their drinks. Well, they may or may not remember that. Yeah, 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 exactly. (laughs) If they're free, they're probably not going to remember it because they're going to be like, I I lost count at 18 white claws. Oh man. Um, but those make for good dancers too. So (laughs) selfish as a DJ, like do your thing. Um, you know, they're gonna remember the food. Uh, they're going to remember how long things took kind of, you know, like how it was cocktail hour, like awkwardly long or, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I think they remember just how your day felt, right? right? Like how did it feel? And that's a question I ask, uh, all my clients at initial consult, like, how do you want your day to feel? Um, and that's where the conversation can go any which way. And I've just been talking with a lot of past clients and current clients about their goal, like past clients, as far as what they remember, current clients on what they want their goals to be. That's what we want our guests just to have a great time. Like we right. just want it to be a party. We want it to be so fun. That's where my wheels got turned. And I'm like, okay, well, what is, what is that? Like, what can we do with that? And I mean, me, cause that could go a million different directions. It could directions. go a million different and places. It, and it can mean something different to everybody. Right. To an extent. Yes. And so I called you and I said, Hey, uh, what are your thoughts about this, 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 and this, you know, creating with stuff you have versus what I can do. You know, you focus on the lighting and like the programming of all of that stuff. I have no idea how to do any of that. I never really learned DMX. Uh, that was always like Travis's thing. And I'm just like, ah, was too many like numbers and two, <laughs> yeah, you have like universe one and two and all these channels, which, it's you know, foreign, foreign language. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so we kind of put our heads together on what we could at least offer. So that's what we're working on right now is offering like this really huge, dare I say, like over the top, like tastefully over the top that has. And then you went out and got two 75 inch screens, right? Yeah, they're just they're ridiculously <laughs> huge. <laughs> so we're going to. Well, and so let's back up on that. Yeah. We, when we originally talked, we were talking like 95 inch. Yes. That was the original plan. And it was like, OK, but how are we going to transport it? And there's nobody out there that makes transportation for something like that. I'm like, yeah. okay, well, let's go to 85. <laughs> That's the next best thing, right? <laughs> Same thing. Yeah. They have ways to transport it, but because it's so niche, you can't get it readily available. I'm like, yes. Riley, I hate to do this, but I think 75 is a good well, well, people, that, And yeah. they're still literally my wingspan yeah. and then some. People don't understand the whole world of road cases. Oh my so gosh. you can have a 75 inch TV, which is huge. But go check out a 75 inch road case on how big they have to be. Cause you factor in padding and all of the things. I mean, they're huge. So the transportation side and the logistics side of things, um, which I, I saw and, and kind of observed through, you know, unique events, which was like, we can get the product, but to transport it there safely. Right. And unloading it and the the way you do that is like that's a whole nother industry, really. Right. So um, but to have the screens, uh, I, I think as far as like looking at uh like head tables, and it used to be backdrop, and it's still very much backdrops, but like huge pipe and drape mm-hmm. and all this, you know, all the linens on the table and all these things. It's like the visual side of things could be so cool with the right type of technology imagine having like panels behind a head table that could not only have the names of the couple and pictures and even like quick snippets of video but to have floral that's kind of falling right and being able to pixel map certain things and you know it it takes the right venue because not all you you there are some venues that we can't execute 
what we want to do based on just size alone. Size, height requirements, all of that. Kind but of the stuff. ones that we can, oh, I think, be will fun. be phenomenal and fun. Exactly, it will be fun. Like I, I just I can't wait to get this off the ground where we can really start to market this. And um, it's not going to be for every client. Uh, it'll not everybody's be, looking for over the top. Right, right. But for those that are, they finally have a way to do this. And um, knowing that uh, the customer service side of things, the the rate of response, the overall communication um, will be as if you're booking just one person right. and that one person has nothing else on their calendar. Like that's the goal, you know, and that's why we partnered because it's like we, we, we share that same philosophy. So stay tuned. You're going to see all sorts of cool stuff coming out um, in regards to the. We'd love to tell you. But it's a visual. It's such a yeah. visual thing. Yeah. It's hard to explain. Like, we can visualize it. We see it. We work with the stuff yeah. pretty consistently. Yeah. But to explain it to somebody, scale down concert. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. That, again, is very tastefully done that fits, like, the wedding uh, the wedding vibe, like it wouldn't right. be a fish out of water where you walk in and you're like, Oh my God, like what is going on here? It looks <laughs> like 1970s disco. It's like, no, 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 no. It'll be very, very subtle yet very, very impactful. So Dave, and I want to get, uh, I want to get your, your thoughts as somebody who is relatively new in this industry, um, doing a lot of weddings, you got a lot of weddings on the books for 2024 and, and beyond, which tells me you're certainly doing, uh, doing something right. Uh, where, where are you seeing, weddings going what's what's been the vibe of what some of the clients are wanting because I, I feel like you're coming in fresh right like you're yeah you're looking at things even differently than what max and i might be uh, how we might be looking at things so what, what are some of the things you're noticing yeah so last year i did 13 in my first full year at yeah, weddings this year i have 50 which Oof. is quite a lot more <laughs> <laughs> um so hopefully i'll be ready for that but um yeah i think i noticed a lot of the people getting married are around my age. Yeah. I'm 26. Uh, so like early, mid, late twenties. And a lot of these people kind of grew up around a lot more, I would say like high energy, maybe more electronic music or like hip hop mm -hmm. and pop. And, um, so I feel like a lot of these people are looking for like more of a high energy kind of environment, which I kind of fit into well. Cause I've been, DJing nightclubs for a while. Um, so yeah, I think what you guys are doing is right in the, in the right alley for what people are looking for. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's an exciting time to be a DJ. Yeah, it is. And, and I've said it multiple times. I, I'll, I was the one that said, you know, 2022 is my last year. <laughs> I put out this video and thanks all my clients. Uh, I took the video down because it's <laughs> like, I'm, I'm just, I'm still so addicted to it. Well, I, I just am. I, I, I remember we had talked about that. You're like, yeah, I'm going to give it up in 2020. And I'm like, okay, cool. We saw the video or whatever. And I'm like, 23 comes around. I'm like, Riley, <laughs> Riley, what, what part of yeah. hang up your headphones means keep doing it. Yeah. And then here we are in 2024 and you're like, it's like you never laugh. And listen, so, it very never... much pays the bills. You know, right. uh, I, I'm not saying I'm doing it for the money. I'm not, I, I, I truly am not. There's other things I could be doing. And I, talk to my wife, Melissa, a lot about it, uh, a lot of close friends about it. And just, I'm not ready yet. I want to really embrace this time right now and and see where the low road takes us. And, um, well, and there's such, there's such a high of it. <sighs> you know, when you hear rock stars talking about, yeah, we did, we feed off of the audience and we have to have those fans. And we like, it's a, it's a million percent true. It is a million percent true. And when you have that 300 plus guest list and they're all dancing and you look, oh my God, we got to do our last song in like two minutes. Like the night flies by like that. It, it's, it's unlike anything else out there. When Agreed. And when you have a group of one, two, 300 people in the palm of your hand, yeah, you for all the right reasons, you can't play the wrong thing. It's in everything that you're playing. It's, oh, oh, right. and you hear that wave of just excitement it starts to just get into your dna man yeah. and having just a little bit of the time off that i've had it's driving me crazy like i'm itching to get back now again get into a wedding you still have the same i still get nervous oh yeah anxious 
uh, you still have that kind of pit in your stomach a little bit because it's it's the pit of you wanting everything to go really really well. It's right. beca- it's like it's you you because you care. Right. When you lose that, to me that's more alarming than anything. Right. If you lose that and you're like ah it is what it is, it's time for you to get out. And I never had that. I burned myself out big time in 2020. I had 62 weddings and it was Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, but a lot of that was COVID makeup uh, dates and, you know, just me going way too hard. Um, and being able to, to be a little bit more strategic now that the kids are older and we're kind of looking at like, okay, what, what do we need, right? Like what, what, how many weddings do we need to survive, mm-hmm. uh, pay our bills, pay our mortgage, um, what are, what, what's, what's some other things that we've got going on? Um, okay. We've got kind of our number, uh, and then let's pad it a little bit more for sake of emergency and everything else. Okay. Here's our number. Um, now it allows me to be a little bit more strategic about what I take on. Right. right? Um, and, and I think that's where you should be 17, 18 years later, right. right? Uh, is, is you should be in a position to, to kind of refine things a little bit more. Um, I'm not the most active on social media as far as like promotion. I, there, this is by the way, zero disrespect to the DJs out there doing this, but I'm sure you've seen a lot of these DJs that are cutting content at the wedding. Right. Listen, man, I'm not in social media mode at a wedding. I'm, I'm making sure that like the first dance is good to go, that this song coming up is going to work. Right. I'm just not in creative mode as far. Hey guys, what's up? It's Riley. I'm at a wedding. We're just about ready to get the first dance started. Like my mind is not there, man. Right. And I'm like, I struggle with being in front of the camera, like doing podcasts. It doesn't feel like you're in front of a camera. Like I'm just hanging out with my friends for talking. We're just for sure shooting the breeze, whatever. Yeah. But for me to get in front of the camera, I don't like that. That is definitely out of my comfort zone. Right. And it's not my thing. Now, will I use cameras and like, um, I'll take deja vu. Yeah. Deja vu. Book yeah. It, right? yeah. We got it. We got to talk um, about that too, before the podcast ends, but I'll take GoPros with me from time to time and I'll just set them up. I'll put one on a selfie stick. I'll walk out to the dance floor and hand it off to somebody, yeah. let it record, or and I'll put one up on my speaker. If I catch something great. Yeah. If not great. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm not a content creator. I'm not. And that's okay. And that's okay. And I don't have the vision to put it all together. Like I, I could either. hand it to Ben from Graphic Formation. He'd be like, this is amazing. And he'd create something just totally out of this world, out of nothing. And 100%. it's like, how, how do you have the vision? Some people to just, do that? Their, 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 their minds are wired a certain way that they can see raw footage of something and turn it into just this incredible final product. That's why it's like for, for wedding cinematography too, you know, watching that whole world explode over the last 10 ish years, it's been mind blowing to me. And I'm very grateful and, and, and excited that I, that I was a part of watching that world evolve and even watching photography evolve, but on the DJ side of things, the lighting that it's, I mean, I remember back in the day, you know, to say there was going to be wireless uplighting, or battery powered speakers, you're like, yeah, one day, uh, right. one day. And now everything it's is the norm. It's, it's, it's crazy. So that's, again, my mind always goes to like, what's, what's going to be next. And I think visual is going to be next. I think visual like screens as a backdrop and again, pixel like video mapping on, on cakes, which, which all exists by the way. Right. Um, I'm going to shout out the Hey Goods again, a Branson show that I went to. They did this acoustic set. And have you seen the uh, their acoustic guitar uh, mounts, basically? Oh, yeah. Where, you know, you stay in one place. Yep. They're good for, like, if you're changing instruments, yep. right? You hit the chorus, and now you're playing on the piano. But they brought these acoustic guitars out that were white on these mounts. And I said to myself, I bet they're going to video a map this. Yep. And sure enough, you know, here's the short throw projector, which those things are mind blowing. Short throw projectors oh. are mind blowing. And they video mapped, uh, all of these instruments, but you better make sure they all stay in one place. <laughs> right. right. It's like little things like that. People just, they're, they're soaking in the, I think anytime you can soak in an experience and not think about the inner workings of how that experience is working, you just won as, right. as a, as a production company. Right. Right. You know, you and I go to concerts. I'm sure David's the same way. It's like, I can enjoy the experience. Don't get me wrong. But I'm looking at, I'm looking at the guitar player. Like, oh, he wants his in-ear monitors to be here. Oh, 
Oh, that drummer was off there. Okay, okay, yeah, the guitar player. Oh, he forgot the lyric. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they yeah. changed the lyric. Yeah, was it intended to do tuning that? his guitar live? Like, I'm I'm looking at all of these things, but then Melissa is just like, "This is awesome!" Like, it is awesome, right? But it's just it's but that stuff is really fun for me, right? I'm looking at the light sequences. Yeah, like, what can yeah. I pick up? Ooh, that was cool. Can I recreate that? Like, yeah, yeah they've got four million dollars in lighting here. Can I do that on my system? Is it possible? If you want your mind blown. My son is big in the WWE. Mm -hmm. Okay. WrestleMania was just this last weekend, uh, depending on when you're hearing this. Uh, <laughs> six and seventh, I think, April 6th and 7th. They were in uh, Philadelphia in a stadium. Go and check out all the lighting and production that they put together. It's, there's, there's nobody doing it better than the WWE right now. I mean, just the millions and millions and millions of dollars they've put into their production. So they go from WrestleMania, which is a live event, mm -hmm. okay, Saturday, Sunday. No pressure. Uh, no pressure. Friday night, the Friday night before was SmackDown, okay? okay. So that's a live event. Then you go into WrestleMania. Uh, uh, combined uh, both days, 145,000 attendance. Wow. Uh, that's just the people that were there. Uh, everything streams on Peacock. Uh, the next that Monday, the next day is Raw in Philadelphia. So it's another live event. So wow. you think about everybody behind the scenes that's run all the pyro, the video packages. What, what blew me away was you have these video montages of things that happened two hours ago. Right. And there are these beautifully edited video packages with just the right kind of music and the right kind of hype. Bro, that happened two hours ago. So you've got people that are filming in real time that are getting a feed and you've got multiple video editors that are taking what they're getting putting it together in a one minute, two minute video that recaps what just happened and off it goes and it's getting live and out to the people. Talk about execution. <laughs> yeah, man. Because now, not only do you have 60,000 sitting right there in front of you, but now you have that live feed going out to the world via TV and it's, streaming and whatever. Like It's mind blowing. You have to execute. It's And all of those teams have to execute in concert together. Yes. It's, yes. It's, it's mind-blowing to see some of that stuff. You, you think about what people are paying to be there. Right. And they're expecting a product. They're mm -hmm. expecting something. Right. And the WWE, they always give it to them. I watched professional wrestling as a kid all the time, took a very long break. And uh, my son, who was big into jujitsu, Isla, my daughter, loves it too. But she just loves watching, like, the girls come out and wrestle. And right. I love her outfit, you know. <laughs> um, but he got back into it. And... You know, when your kids get into something, you just happen to get into it too, right? right? It's right. just, it is what it is. It's a little nostalgia. Yeah. And I'm just watching the execution of all of these things happening. And it was very inspiring to me. I, I love to get inspired by the big boys that are out there doing it. Um, the one that I look at and I just, my mind is blown, Taylor Swift. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm not a Swifty by any stretch of the imagination. Like I enjoy her music. Sure. And I enjoy playing her music because of the feel that it gives everybody, right? But that Eras tour and the way they roll around with that and the, I see them setting it up and it, it took what ten hours to set just the stage, mm -hmm. just the stage that they walk on. That that's, doesn't that's count all, anything else. All LED, yeah, uh, and it visuals raises. and lowers and like, and it has to work. It, it has to work single every night. single time. It has to work. Right. And your semis upon semis upon semis. Like Ninety tractor trailers, I think, yes. is what transports that. Yes. Holy it's cow. it's the art of what do they what do they call that? It's big in the military. It's the art of redundancy. So it's doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, but the same way every time. Yep. Oh, and that's how I do my stuff. That's how I set it up. That's, that's how I the tear key, it down. man. That's the key. I'll get people that'll say, "Hey, can we help you tear down?" No. Can we help you move stuff when I'm ready? Yeah. Because it has to go just so. That is like it's my checklist to make sure that it's all done right. The same thing, setting it up. It all goes up the same way every single time. It comes down the same way every single time. And yeah. it's, you got to fold your cables the same way. Uh, I prep for weddings the same way. I mean, yep. dude, I'm, I'm a maniac when it comes to like, again, I will say obsessive compulsive about how it's, but it's, re, it's, it, I want to keep everything redundant. It's familiar. I'll, it's yes. It's comfortable. The same way every time. So, you know, if something would go wrong, that's what I was going to say about Travis Newell real, real more quick. I know we're shouting him out a lot, but he's, but he's, he's worth the shout out. Travis was a guy, what, what he also taught me, one of the biggest lessons that he taught me, even to this day, is when I would show up to a wedding, 
I mean, David's called me with issues. Nathan's called me with issues, like technical issues Mm -hmm. to remain very calm, trying to figure it out. You know, if I was getting ready for a prom and I couldn't get the lights to work, which for the first year of my DJ career, nothing worked. He was like, Riley, have you turned the lights on? You know, Did you like, plug it in? Yeah. <laughs> Did you and most of the, the time I say, like, oh, yeah, yeah, I need to do that because I was always so nervous. But he'd say, OK, let's go ahead and start. Let's let's reverse engineer this. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what is what is not working? Uh, I, the lights aren't the lights aren't uh, changing colors. OK, the lights aren't changing colors. All right. So let's just start from the beginning. They're, they're plugged in, right? Yeah, they're plugged in. I'm getting power. OK, um, can you like wiggle the cord? You know, I'm obviously paraphrasing all the things we went through, right. but we would get to the source of it almost every single time. But his demeanor was always just very wasn't up, wasn't down. Well, you this starts in like 20 minutes, doesn't it? Like, dude, like, come on. It was very calm. Yeah. I've never seen him excited or down. It's always just very, it's Travis. Yes. And so when I see other organizations, whether it's in the wedding industry or not, and they have kind of the, the, the leadership side of things that's freaking out about stuff, all that will be is just this, you know, tsunami of other people freaking out and you're wasting time, right? right? Hey, I can't get sound. Okay. Well, let's trace back why you can't get sound. Well, and, and I would say close to 99% of the time, it's because something's not turned on or it's a cable, right? right. You know, yep. or, oh, yeah, I got my master gain is all the way down. Okay, right. cool. We got through it. And you'll remember to like, kind of like a pilot having a checklist, yep. right? You I learn mean, all that as you go. Checklists exist for a reason. So of course you're going, God, you're an idiot. Yeah, I know. Well, there's many, <laughs> many, many, I many times it. where I hung up the phone. I'm like, well, that was embarrassing. <laughs> Sorry about that. I yep, got to turn my mixer on. That would help. Yeah. That would help. Um, this conversation was awesome, man. Yeah. This was awesome. Very good. Let's talk real quick about Deja Vu. Yeah. Uh, you want to kick things off? Because it's a company him and I both run together. Sure. So Deja Vu, um, it's for the people and for the clients and for the events. And it does, it's not just limited to the event industry. If you want to go not on vacation, all. by all means, reach out. Uh, but if you if videography is not a priority for you or it's just out of budget reach, which a lot of times that's at least what I find is for sure. people book the video right away because it's super important or they book it at the end. Like if we've got enough money to do it. Yep. And if you're in that situation, bypass it. Cause you probably are not going to be happy with what you're just left with kind of a situation. But anyway, that's a, that's a way for couples or people to capture content or capture video footage on a more economic level. So uh, the way I always explain it to couples is, there's weddings that have um, still disposable cameras on tables. Mm -hmm. Same concept as that, but instead of using those disposable cameras, then you get the GoPros. You're able to rent 4K video footage GoPros, and you set those out on your tables and just let people have fun with it. Extra batteries, extra accessories. Uh, GoPros are pretty darn durable, so have fun with it. But yeah, I mean, it is. It's it's for those that maybe uh, don't have the budget or, you know, like you said, family vacations or church outings mm-hmm. or, you know, these these big moments that you don't want to go out and drop four or five thousand bucks on multiple GoPros. Graduation time's coming up. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's one of those other things. Like yeah. let people run around with that or do a video testimonial type of thing. Set it up yeah. in the corner. Yeah. Um, but the nice thing about it is there's not an editing thing to it. You get to keep all of the raw footage. So as it's captured, that's what you get to keep. You mm-hmm. get to pull the SD cards out of those cameras before you send them back. Yep. And the thing that we're, again, because Riley and I have such the same paranoia, the same OCD, <laughs> the same all of that. The idea is to have those cameras in your hands. Well, they're seven-day rentals. Let's put that out there. But I like to have those in those couples' hands or those people's hands either the Wednesday or the Thursday before the wedding. So you can get familiar. First of all, we can make sure that they got there. Second of all, you can get familiar with how they operate. If you've never operated a GoPro before, um, it can be a little bit daunting. It's like For it's sure. a new piece of technology that you may or may not have experienced before. So get to know how it works, see what's all involved with it. And then when it comes time, now you can say, Cousin Eddie, you can, will you operate this for me? All you have to do is push this button. Yeah. It records, let yeah. it run. So Yeah, yeah. Keep the SD cards if you want to edit them down the line. You have every right to do so. If you want to hire out the editing, uh, somebody local in your market or take it to like Fiverr.com, which is a great website to subcontract some stuff. Um, you can get some really cool final footage or, or keep all the raw footage. You know, I, at our wedding, which was in 2012, so I don't even know if that was like the first generation of GoPros or not, but I had a buddy of mine that uh, had a GoPro 
there and it was in the party bus and it, you know the, I, I look at that footage all the time right. you know it, it, it's some of the coolest stuff um yeah it's fun when i take them with me because like, sometimes i'll take them and if i catch content we'll catch content yeah. but like i said i'll put it on a, a selfie stick and i'll just walk out to the dance floor and people will have a field day with those yeah it, it, it gets to be a little like will you stop spinning please stop spinning <laughs> yeah. i can't keep watching this if you're going to keep spinning but yeah. that, that's part of that moment yeah. right and so, it's part of that excitement of that moment and you kind of see what it looks like from inside of that dance floor yeah because we see it as the outsiders all the time right and so it's a whole different feel when you're like in the eye of the storm if you yep. will yeah one of a, a big video that went super viral a couple of years ago uh it wasn't our gopros obviously but they mounted a gopro on a fireball bottle have you seen that one no Where but that's like shots really one, one of my favorite things that i've seen is uh they go. We just took a new marketing approach to this. By yeah, the way. <laughs> yeah. What, what I love is uh, there's a video where it's first drink, last drink. So it's like, "Hi, my name is Riley. This is my first drink," and then it cuts to, "Hi, my name is Riley. This is my last drink." And it's like at the end of the night, <laughs> it's all disheveled. <laughs> it's it's so good. First, like, look up like YouTube first drink, last drink sometime for those that are watching. It's really, really, really clever. So. Uh, well, this was great. Well, thank you for taking some time to chat. Like I said, we've uh, we brought your name up enough. And with Megan being out of town, I'm like, well, I want to definitely still do a podcast, get it out. And uh, I thought we could take some time and just hang out and chat. So yeah, for real. Well, thanks. Yeah. Thanks for having yeah, me. I appreciate it. It's awesome. Always good to sit and talk. And yeah, I'll put all of your and... contact information uh, in the show notes on Spotify, YouTube. Uh, for those that have been listening and you haven't subscribed yet, it would mean a lot to us to do that. Follow us on Instagram, although we might be starting over on Instagram, so stay tuned. You'll still be able to find us uh, some sort of new username because we're. I'm telling you, our, our reach is just very limited for whatever reason. A huge thank you to David. And David, I will put all of your content information in the show notes as well. David is a guy that has just been... Been crushing it, man. I'm I'm really proud of of your growth and your commitment. And you're gonna get sick of me saying that, but it's few and far between that I've that I've experienced that. So, and he's uh, a good guy. And he's, he's a good genuinely guy. a nice guy. And yeah, yeah. He definitely does things the right way. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you all so much, and we will see you next week.